Good evening, YouTube, and welcome to the Piper Report. So I never thought I would actually see this. The Washington Post, yes, that is correct. The Washington Compost did an article, put an article out that Trump committed no crime and the Democrats need to get over it. This could possibly change the whole, this could transpose the current affairs that are happening. I find you find it shocking. I find it shocking that the Washington Post is actually defending Trump. Initially, after the Comey hearing yesterday, if you look on MSNBC or any type of liberal news outlets, you would automatically see that they were saying this was the end for Trump, that Trump was now going to be impeached. Comey laid out a brilliant case that completely points to collusion between Trump and Russia, and Trump is going to be going to jail, but impeached for sure. That isn't so true. When I watched the whole James Comey interview, the few things that popped out to me were one, he admitted that he was the leaker, that he leaked to the media, the the media organization called uh, The Intercept. He leaked to them that um, so he can get a special prosecutor appointed to investigate this case. Right there is a crime. And also that Loretta Lynch was working with the Clinton campaign and was trying to manipulate Comey or try to persuade Comey to call the investigation in the Hillary and her email server a matter, which is synonymous with what Podesta called it and Hillary herself called it. Those two, I think, are the big stories of the whole thing. What Trump said regarding, or what Comey said regarding Trump and the Russian investigation was what we expected. It was no different than what he said in the past, the other three times he testified. Nothing really changed. So this is actually a pretty big deal here. And I think now, if you actually see some of the news outlets, they're starting to come to the conclusion and the realization that perhaps Trump is innocent. Maybe we do just hate his guts. Maybe there is no story here. But this is a really interesting article, especially from his thought by the Washington Compost. Before the angry mob of breathless Democrats gets too spun up and ahead of itself, the anti-Trumper should calm down and try to absorb just how preposterous it is to suggest that President Trump may have committed a criminal offense by supposedly obstructing justice during the Russia Michael Flynn investigation. Consider for a moment what would have happened if Trump had placed an op-ed in a prominent newspaper arguing that the investigation into his campaign and former National Security Advisor Flynn was misguided, a wasteful use of government resources, and that he thought it should stop. To do so would be fo foolish, but not criminal. And that's the crux of the matter there, that paragraph. When I was speaking with Dual Hand Path the other day on our collaboration, I said something similar, and he, he agreed with me on that, is that if Trump just said to Comey, you know what, Michael Flynn's a good guy, there's so much political polarization happening all over the country here, could you just drop the case? That is not obstructing justice. You, the person has to be pressured into feeling if he doesn't do something, there could be dire consequences awaiting him. If Trump, for instance, said, Comey, you better end this investigation right now or I will destroy you in your career, that would be obstructing of justice. But this isn't. This isn't. People seem to forget that. People just heard Trump asking Comey a question, and all of a sudden, they use that as reinforcement to support their fundamental ideals that Trump is evil and Russia is evil. Similarly, what if the president paraded up and down Pennsylvania Avenue in front of the Justice Department with a bullhorn shouting, stop the Flynn investigation? It would be unwise and inappropriate, but no one would say the president committed a crime, and he certainly could not be charged with obstruction of justice. So, if the president's wishes about an investigation can be loud in public, how is it possible that he violated the law by having a private conversation with a member of his own administration? How can it be that a bold position made in public would be legal, yet an arguably reserved position made in private is somehow considered criminal? That is a very, very good question. When it comes to obstructing justice before an audience, does size matter? I would love to hear from lawyers about this. Anyway, everyone should also carefully consider the arguments made by constitutional scholar Alan Dershowitz. Dershowitz presented some compelling legal insight. The president, he writes, is the head of the unified executive branch of government, 
and the DOJ and FBI work under him, and he may order them to do what he wishes. Former Director James Comey likewise confirmed during yesterday's testimony that, as a legal matter, the president is head of the executive branch and could direct, in theory, we have important norms against this, but direct that anybody be investigated or anybody not be investigated. I think he has a legal authority because all of us ultimately report in the executive branch up to the president. Norms are important, and Trump is not big on playing by the rules, but that does not mean he has broken the law. Comey's testimony should be enough to let the issue of criminality fade away, but the Democrats and their allies in the media are heavily invested in bringing the president down. Yesterday did not go as they wanted to, and the Democrats' rage won't let them see the truth. What might happen, what I predict will happen, if the events we are currently witnessing continue to unfold over the next couple years, the Democrats will lose more at the midterms. They did not really change their tune at all after they lost the election, after they lost the Senate, and after they lost the House in 2016. They didn't change their tune. Instead, they doubled down. They started preaching bigotry and hatred more than they did before. They started blaming uh, other entities for their um, incapabilities more than they did before. Everything they should have learned not to do they are doing it, and they are doing it with an, exagger- with an exaggeration. They are making a mockery of themselves, and by extension, their party, the Democratic Party. They really need to be careful here. They really need to be careful here. Because if they don't, you will see that whoever they nominate in 2020 will lose to Trump. And you will see whoever runs in 2018 and 2020 will most likely lose to Republicans. The more they obstruct and the more they double down on their rhetoric and their hatred and their bigotry and this constant inundation of Russia Trump ties, the more severe their loss will be and the greater the victory for the Republicans will be. So I warn you, Democratic Party. I warn you, Democratic media members. Be careful what you are doing. You may just very well regret it. And I'm done.